I'm Cinnamon Cooney. I'm the Art Sherpa. This is Heart Party, and in about one hour, we're going to teach you how to do this fabulous big-eyed owl. So you can have this on your wall in just one hour. So grab your brushes, grab your canvas, get your water, get your cup of coffee or whatever else you're drinking today, and meet me back at this easel right now. Come on. Come on. Shenanigans over. Other shenanigans begin. I'm Cinnamon Cooney. I'm your Art Sherpa. I'm going to guide you through painting this fabulous owl with the big eye. You guys loved him. You guys voted on him. You guys picked him. So here he is, all ready for you to paint. We're going to go over our materials list. Our materials are here on the palette cam, the cad red, the cad yellow, the yellow ochre, the titanium right, the burnt sienna, we still don't know why it's burnt, and the Mars black. Then in brushes, we have a little assortment to work with. We have the crazy messed up angle half inch brush. We have a nice number six square from Creative Mark. We've got a 16 filbert and an 18 filbert. You could have up to a 20 filbert. I just like to have a couple of those. A little detail brush, you know, anything around a six to an eight is good, and another half inch angle brush. And that gives me a bunch of little choices. But of course, as usual, your economically priced package of assorted brushes, as long as they have some angles, will work for you. And they're four chrome. The other thing that we've got is we have pastel or chalk or sketching chalk, and these are nice for sort of sketching in our painting and laying it in, but like I always say, if you can't get any of this, your kid's sidewalk chalk will work. Just try not to pick a psychedelic color that's going to turn your whole canvas pink or purple or some crazy thing. All right, we've got that. Hair dryer. And I'm going to have a tape measure here to help you get this in. Okay, so I've got my little tape measure. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to sketch him in. And how we're going to sketch him in, oh, by the way, you'll be hearing noises. As you know, I have three kids. They are being supervised. They are being looked after. But they're probably not going to be that quiet. And that's just the reality of our houses and our lives is sometimes we have furry children or actual children or friends for whom our peace and tranquility is maybe not the number one priority. <laughs> All right, I want you to come up. We're going to make a mark that looks like that is about ooh, 14 inches up and nice little measurement, five inches over. So come up 14 inches on your 16 by 20 canvas. This is a 16 by 20 canvas, 16 by 20 canvas. I'm going to sure you come up 14, right there, and 5 inches in. Alright, so we know whether there's a little eye there. Now we're going to come over from the side, it's about 5 inches. We'll go up 14, so we just know that. 
We just want some placement for our eye. Make these marks small, okay? Our beak, the top of our beak, is about 11 and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas. And he's right there. So we're gonna have that there. So I just wanna know where those objects are. Uh, <laughs> placement of my camera is a little bit different. So I'm having a little trouble figuring out how to stay on camera. All right, you ready for this? We're gonna start sketching this in. Now the beak is easy. I'm, I wanna, uh, a half inch at least over here. I'm going to make a nice rounded mark and I'm going to come down. Let's see how long I have it here. Oh, he's about four and a half inches long. So you could sit there if you were like having trouble spacing things, you can make a mark. But we're going to make this about four and a half inches long. This is acrylic paint though. So these little sketches just help us place things in. This is that upside down triangle. Not a big deal. Okay. And we have our little eye marks there that let us know the width. And this eye is very easy to get in. We're going to take deep breath. We're not afraid of anything. We can handle this eye. Eyes are easy. They may be the windows of the soul, but they're also one of the easiest and funnest things to paint. I do them all the time in my regular artwork. If you've been following me on my Facebook page, you see my daily paintings or on Pinterest. You know how much I like to do eyes. All right. I'm going to make a nice arch. I think any arches that you can, just make a nice upward arch. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to a nice big rounded arch like that. And I'll continue this line down so I know where it is. And that's how I get that nice big eye. And that's all, <laughs> that's all the sketching that you need to do for this whole piece. So when you guys were voting on it, you kept saying the realistic eye, but actually this is a very expressive impressionistic owl and is super easy and emotionally enjoyable to do. We're gonna get into our paint now. Woohoo, our paint, I love our paint. All right, oh, you can hear my son. He's in a stage of really, really expressing himself. <laughs> Just really expressing himself. All right, the underpainting that we're gonna put around this canvas is our ochre and our white. And we're creating almost a parchment paper color. All right, and we're gonna get this over everything because we want this base color over the whole canvas except for the eye and the beak. Now you'll notice that where my paint got into my chalk, it sort of blended out the chalk and that's a thing that happens uh, there, which is why I mentioned maybe not having a crazy kid color chalk, you know, that's okay, but pick a lighter color because it will blend in your paint. Here's your rule. Since we're painting such a wise creature, we're gonna get the wisdom of just realizing not to sweat the little stuff the little stuff does not matter, especially in acrylic painting, and probably in our lives too. You know? In painting, panicking is never gonna help you solve whatever's going on in your painting, and in life, panicking is never gonna help you solve what's going on in your life. But sometimes it feels good to have a good, healthy panic. All right, we're just putting that in real fast. Now, one of the things that you're seeing here is I am covering all the white of my canvas with my paint. And if, I'm gonna switch hats with this thing to knock it off. If you're seeing a lot of the white showing through on your canvas, one of two things has happened. You don't have enough paint or water on your brush and you've got to correct one of those two things because you want it to coat it and you want it to flow on there very smoothly. You'll notice that I dip in my water cup and then I get enough paint loaded onto my brush before I paint and that gives me that even professional coating and when I start to see that white just shining through past the point where I can work it out 
Well, I get some more water and some more paint. So this is a great place to practice how is my brush loading. Another thing you'll notice is I'm not that concerned with the light and dark of this underpainting. I'm more concerned about getting this parchment color up on my owl because that's going to be like what the pin feathers are shining through. <laughs> Ooh. You know, um, Sometimes there can be shortages. I'm hearing about one coming up here really soon. Sometimes there can be shortages on 16 by 20 canvases right now at Michael's and at Walmart and different places because of all the painting parties that are opening up and they really need those. So just remember you can go one size up as long as the proportions are the same. So you can, you know, have an 18 by 24, you could have a, a 8 by 10. There, just make sure that your proportions are the same and so you can go bigger or smaller if you can't get the size canvas that I've got here, you know, and no worries, they'll, they'll work it out, they'll figure out how to get more and put out some more white paint, some more white paint. I'm painting a nice quality acrylic. Um, if you're painting student quality acrylics, like basics, you know, or an economically priced paint, sometimes it can take more paint to coat the canvas and the pigments won't be as rich. Don't panic. Don't feel like it's you. It's not you. It's not you at all. Just a paint. You know, when you're ready, you can always get a more expensive brand of paint. See how easy this is going in? This is just so easy to put in. All right. How's that looking? For you guys that are coming back and have painted a few of these with me and are painting this with me today, oh my god, thank you. I really do love seeing your finished work on Pinterest and your finished work on my Facebook page. I've got quick links here. You go right to the Facebook. You can show me what you did. If you have questions, I don't mind answering at all. You know, don't forget to click and subscribe. Comment. I love comments. I love questions. It's totally okay. It does not bother me at all. Um, what kind of Sherpa would I be if your questions bothered me? It'd be a terrible Sherpa. You know? So, all right. We've got that in. And then... <sighs> hair dryer. So let's dry it. Pretty good. Rinsing out my brush. Rinsing it out. Having a little fun. Okay. Getting a sip. Today I am powered by Java, which is a good thing to be powered by. You know, put the things in your art space that make you feel good, make you feel centered. I'm going to get my half inch angle brush. Oh, I almost painted with my coffee. That's the thing, painting with coffee. All right, now I'm going to, just to give myself a little hand here, I'm going to come here and I'm going to just put my beacon in black. Okay, put it in black. Just put him in in black.
Okay, so I know where that is. And I'm going to add a little white to my black. Give myself a dark gray. Apply any shades of gray joke you want here. I do. In the garden of my mind. <laughs> I do. I put that in. Oh, I got that in. I went and got a little more white. Just light that up down the center here. So my first gray was down this left hand side. And my second gray, I'm doing little tiny brush strokes right down here, down my beak. And I'm allowing this side to be my pure black. Because what I'm trying to say is that the light is hitting this very sharp and rounded structure right here. And so I'm shading it. So, so far I've got three shades. I've got the black, a very dark gray, and a slightly light, lighter shade of gray. Right down that middle. Rinsing out my brush. I'm going to go back and I'm going to get some more black. And I'm going to come along my eye here and I'm going to just outline it. I'm painting on the edge of my brush, my bottom edge here, and that's giving me my line. I'll show you here on the palette. When I paint on the edge, I get a thin line. If I paint on the white, I get a thick one. So I'm painting on the edge. It's a lot like an eyeliner, so you want the short bristles if you're painting the angle to begin the stroke, and your long bristles to finish it. And if you've never worn eyeliner, what were you doing? Where's some eyeliner? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think eyeliner is a necessity for life. It is fun, and there's certainly some fantastic eyeliner tutorials here on YouTube where the information for everything is. Everything in the world is here. And I am thickening up my eye here a little bit. So I've thickened it up at the corner. Now I'm going to put in my pupil. And I'm going to start my pupil about a half inch up the eye here, and I'll finish about a half inch here. And I'm going to leave a half inch of white. Trick about our pupils, folks. If they're small, it will bother you. Because birds only have very tiny little pupils, and they're very angry, and they're about to just mess you up if you've kept parrots, you know what I'm talking about. Paint that in nice and black. All right. Now we can always open it up and adjust the eye later. You can always do that. You can always come in later and add some adjustments. Okay, so we've got that in. Now, a fun thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over here we're going to mix a little of our white with a little of our sienna. A little bit of our burnt sienna. I'm going to make a line right here between the beak and the eye. It's about an inch about the beak. And I'm going to come up like that with that sienna. And then below the beak and around the edge, I'm going to come around like that. It's just a rounded line. It's not straight. Curve it up. I keep getting on the canvas. I curve it up. I curve it up. And that gives me that space. I'm going to get some of that white and I'm going to make some brush strokes on the flat. So when I say on the flat, I mean like that, on the flat. On the flat. Coming out from the eye. Coming around, we're just adding a layer here. We know we're going to come back. Well, that one's nice, a little more brown in it, but it's okay. Don't panic about any of these because there's layers on this little guy. He's fast and he's easy, but he is layered. Okay, fast, he's easy, but he is layered. We just want some of this 
under feather event here. We'll take that right up carefully to the edge. Do not get caught up in the painting of what things are. That is the thing that will mess with you new artists the most. Is, is be like, it's an eye, and then your left brain has a whole bunch of opinions and your right brain can't help you. So just breathe and relax and realize that this is just a little journey that you're having. Putting some paint on the canvas. Don't think about the eye. Don't think about the stuff. Just put your brush strokes in. If you've done a very strong brush stroke here, where it's like a, an obvious line, I want you to take it out now with your paint and make sure that it's not showing because you don't want it to, like if you went with a dark brown, go back with a little bit of your raw sienna and your white to erase it out. I'm kind of erasing it out there so it's not too strong. See, I'm starting to put in my eye here. I don't want that line showing. I'm sketching that in for you guys. You sketch that in for yourself, but you don't want it sitting and hanging out looking at you later. You don't want to be looking at some line right there. It'll bug you. You gotta get smart enough and wise enough and clever enough to realize what in life bugs you. Sooner the better. <laughs> and just let it go. People's opinions of who you are and what you should do. So uh, I love that you guys, I mention this all the time, I love that you guys pin and that you share and that you put your work on Facebook. And I love to see the work you're doing that's not necessarily even what I'm teaching here. But I've noticed there's been a couple of times where there is someone in the person's social network who thinks they're funny. They're funny. <laughs> and they want to say something funny about the painting and how it looks. And I have this to say to that, to the funny people in your life who are looking at your artwork. Um, if you are not getting the courage to stand up and make something and paint something and create something, you don't get an opinion. Not a funny one that's really not that funny or anything other than good job. Because the fact is, is that it is courageous to put your heart out there and make something. And jokes that are not uplifting and do not raise us up and do not make us feel stronger, those aren't great jokes. They're just not. Um, if you're making something, you got my respect, you've got my time, and you will find that you have the respect and time of the people in your life that matter. 99.9% .9 of the stuff I see out there on um, social networks is incredibly supportive and people are really surprised at how amazing their friends actually are. A little more white and Sienna. But, you know, there's always going to be somebody saying something. What are you going to do? All right, so we have this little field laid in, right? That's pretty good. Now, I'm gonna rinse out my brush. <laughs> I'm gonna get my black. And my, fir and my sienna. My first is my black and my sienna. I'm gonna make this really rich brown. And I'm gonna come from here, and I'm gonna come around here and follow it around. So I'm making little short brush strokes as I come up, diagonally heading towards the corner. Right here I am. There's that. Come right up here. And we're gonna come right around here and make a very light We're going to define the little cheeks here. That's what we're doing. We're laying that in with our <coughs> little black coming in. And as I will have the short strokes here, they'll be short here, down here. And then as I come around, I'll get them longer. These are the little feathers. 
defining his little eye shapes. Pretty fun stuff. I'm rounding him out. Woo! We're doing the outlands. All right. I'm going to add a little white and a little brown. I'm going to come up here and add some feathers right there. I need some feathers right there. Oh, take out that. Take out that line. I don't want that line showing. Sometimes you'll sketch a line in your paint and just paint over it. It's just not anything to do with anything. Okay, so we're going to come up in here and I want you to first we have a little blast here. We're going to get our yellow ochre. We'll mix a little water in it and get a nice flow on it. And I'm going to make these little short, they're kind of like this. These little dashes on the edge of the brush. So little dashes. I'm making them, layering them little, you know, like bricks. I do try to break up my patterns. A little art trick that we always need to be doing. Breaking up our patterns. And they'll get, they'll be smaller at the beak and they'll get a little longer as I go up. You know, I'm filling in these little feathers. Pressing the brush down. All right. So we have that there, and we're going to put some stuff happening down there. We're going to come, and these little feathers are on the wide. They're big little downward feathers. And he's cold, so he's all fluffed up. So we're going to just have these nice downward little feathers. This could not be easier, right? Could not be easier. Look at those going right down there. A painting like this is about enough paint. It's about having enough paint on the canvas. Speaking of those jokers in your life, if you happen to be married to one or close to one or is your friend or is your furry companion, you know who they are, uh, don't show them your painting in the underpainting stage, which is this beginning stage where we're just putting on paint. Um, every artist I know, I don't care how good they are, I don't care how famous they are, I don't care what they're doing out there, they'll tell you there is a stage in painting where it is not has its prettiest face on. <laughs> it just doesn't. And it'll work out in the end. You know? It'll be okay in the end. You just gotta hang in with your painting. You know, I'm gonna come up here and make sure I've got a little bit of this around the side. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I feel like I should fill in some of that sienna and white right there. So I'll just come back there and do that. I'm going to have this brush stroke interestingly going in because, you know, as I'm kind of curving and going in, on these particular little owls, I'm going to come around this side and do this too, they have these little feathers around their beaks that are fluffy and go in. And you can even let some of that go over the line of your beak. Don't worry about that. Won't be a problem. All right. Now get your brush wet. You don't actually have to rinse it out. Get a little black, little black. Don't get crazy with it. Once you come here with the Santa and you're gonna make these little above the beak, more little pin feathers. More little little upward brush strokes. Now you could be doing this with this little brush here if you wanted to, but I'm still just just hanging in my half inch angle today. Uh oh. So we're coming up here. And what are you gonna do? You just keep painting. You just keep making the videos.
right? And come down here, a little more of that sienna. Titch of black, but we still want it really brown. And we're going to make some downward dashes, not everywhere, just some irregular places. We're going to be layering this with the white feathers. So, no. Just have that there. Fun stuff. Rinse this out. Now, the white paint. We're going to be using a lot of it. Right? I've got a little sienna tinting my white paint, so it's off white. And I might even put a little ochre into it, but I want it real light. I want it like one of those many shades of Home Depot white. You know? And then that way we can come back and use some pure white for pop. And we're going to come around these eyes. And we're going to do a light brush stroke here. When we talk about pressure, this is one of those places where pressure matters. You want light pressure on this as if your canvas has a sunburn. You want it as if the canvas has a sunburn. <gasps> oh, you poor widow canvas. And so what's happening when you do that light, light pressure when you're painting. Oh, got a little too yellow there, so I'll just wipe that off and get some more white. Get back into those Home Depot colors is that a lot of what is underneath it shows through. Look at these long swoop down, swoop down. I'm kind of like going like that, swoop, swoop, swoop down. So I come up to the edge of the eye and I swoop down, real light, working from my shoulder, which is important. Light pressure, allowing that paint that we layer to show through. Might give myself a nice little edge here at the eye. Good job. Get some more white paint. This one will be much more white. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to do these upward white feathers that are in this upward curve from an upward C. I'll show you in the color. Rinse it out because I don't want that much color. Upward C. The white, I need some more white. I'm put it on my canvas here. Yeah, so definitely didn't get that plugged in. That's awesome. So you'll have heard me from this camera here. I don't know how that sound is today. What can you do coming up here with the white? I'm going to go back and get a little more white. We're going to really get strong with the white right here at the corner. Coming up the eye. Coming up. Coming up with the eye. Right all the way up to our little brown line. Really strong white. Oh, little brown got in there, but you know what? I'll just blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it. See that? While my paint is wet, I have a lot of options, a lot of choices, and sometimes it's just blending it. And the blend is also about that light pressure. A lot of painting is about how, how heavy is your pressure. I'm going to get a little bit of that black brown that I have on my paint. And I'm going to come here, and I'm going to add a soft feather around the beak. Soft feather, and these are curved brush strokes. This is the trick of this. These are light, and they have a slight curve to them, like like a comma or a apostrophe. Look, light, 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 light. I'm lightening this whole area up, and then I start to curve back this way here. But this curve goes like that. It goes in a little bit. Get a little more white paint. There you go, coming in this side with these little feathers curling in. Yeah. Coming in that side. 
there we go. Light paint. So I got some color on there. Just rinse it off. Now we're going to come in with a little white. And we're going to come up here with our little white. We're going to come here, all over here, like that. But we're doing that light brush stroke. So see how, see how earlier I was like, make sure none of the white canvas is showing through. Well, now you want some of the under canvas showing through. And you get that by not adding too much water to your brush and by having a very light pressured stroke. The bristles are light going across the canvas so that they're skipping over. I'm going to bring some of these feathers up, pointing, trying to hide that line, coming up there a little bit, down, because we know we're going we're gonna to make these little swirly shapes. All right, excellent. So we got that there, and then we just need a little bit up top. I will let it get back into that Home Depot color where I'm picking up a little bit of the Sienna. I love that you guys can see all the nonsense happening on the cam, and some of this is wet, and I'm not going to stress about that, right? I'm just going to try to lighten this up, right? Some of it will blend into the white, and I'm not worried. I'm just lightening up that centered feathers, creating those layers. Ooh, it's all about the layers here. Okay. Rinsing off my brush. Now something I'm going to take the time to do is get some black paint. I'm going to come around my eye, this little upward edge here. I'm going to define this with some black. What you're going to find is especially live, the fact that there is a different tone underneath it will give it some wonderful dimension. And that's, that's a nice touch. I'm going to also come up here and I'm going to add short little, and, and they're like, down here towards the nose or like that. Short little feathers. They get a little bigger and more solid as they come up here. All right. And I'm going to get some more black. I'm going to add, whoops, that's just a little more black than I needed. Did you guys see that? Woo! Woo! Woo, so exciting. It's more black. I'm going to come here and I'm going to make these little feather dots. Now here I might change the curve. I might curve it that way. Pick up some more paint. And so that's how I break up some of the patterns down here as I change the area of the curve. I'm going to rinse out here. And I'm going to get some just burnt sienna, just the straight color. And I'm going to come here doing these upward dashes. Define that space with just that. Find those feathers, come over here and define some feathers. And then here, I'm going to get on the edge of my angle. And these are kind of like S's. With just the pure Sienna. So that would look kind of like, like that. I'm going to use the edge of my brush to do that. And so that kind of gives us that little definition of feather light here. 
if you feel like something's too dark, you don't worry about it because you go right into your white. Now we're going to get right into our white. We're going to do some stuff. We're going to come right under here with our angle brush. And we're going to do a little under the eye. And really right here. Just the white. You can always come back and strengthen your black later. And up here, I'm going to do some just right here. Just this upper edge here. Put some feathers here. Just make some feather little our little ash marks that say feathers. I'm going to very strongly come here and soften this edge. And see there are fluffy little feathers that are coming around this space, our little beak space. We need to add some white here. We just do that. Stress about it. We just do it. We need some here. Wherever you feel you need that white. To lighten him up. These guys just come in all kinds of tundra colors and all these kinds of colors. Now I'm going to switch to my little number six square here. It's a hard, sharp edge detail. And I'm going to do a lot of the painting on this edge here for clean edge. And then where I need to fill in spaces, I'll switch to the flat. And I'm going to come in and just fix my eye a little bit. Give it a nice clean edge. Right up there, make sure the feathers blend right into that. All right. Now, Here's a crazy little trick. It's a little detail you can do. I want you to get some white, add just a titch of black to it so that it's just off white in the gray scale. And come right here on the inside edge. You can make a little highlight right there along this. You can even make a little highlight right here you got to be careful. You want it to be gray enough to not really show, so you've got to come back with black. You want this right here to be a dark gray, but not a pure black. And I'm just in this upper part of that, coming in with that. And what I'm looking for is I want it to be lighter than the black, but not so light as to really stand out. Or you can just do straight black like what I have here, which is just straight black. So if you want to shade it, you can shade it. If you want to leave it straight black, you can leave it straight black. We're going to come here. We're going to get some of our white paint on the edge. And we're going to, in this upper range here, we're going to add a little highlight to the beak. These are light little brush strokes. They're very short. They're longer up top. And then they shorten as I go down. The beak. They're soft, soft, soft. And you get a nice little beak highlight from that. So I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow that I have, that cad yellow, mix a little bit of white into it. Yellow can be kind of a tough color to paint over other colors because its pigment is not always that strong or capable. If you have student paints, this is more true. And that's why I'm painting the yellow first in this, is for the people with student paints, because your yellow will never overcome your red. It just won't do it. If you have really high-end paints, like the high-end heavy body Liquitex or Matisse or Golden, yeah, it's going to do it. But if you have, you know, any anything else that's really not... So the best bet is for everybody is I'm just going to show this with the yellow first. 
to make sure that we have those yellow highlights going in. If you had an area where you close the eye too much, you can open it up right now. Remember, whatever's dry, you can paint over and paint out, even if you have to go over it with white and put it back in. Not stuck with it. All right, so there he is. He's starting to really look like himself. He's starting to look like the owl that he is. Ooh, I almost put paint in my coffee. I don't want to paint in my coffee. Okay, so I'm going to come in with a little bit of my cad red. I'm going to eat, tint it out with a little bit of brown or even just a small touch. And you got to be careful with a small touch of black because I want a darker red. The trick with eyes is, is you're going to want a light area right here. So come slowly, do little small hashing brush strokes like you see me doing here. I'm going to come in here. Now, don't worry about preserving anything. This is about layers. I'm painting on the edge of my brush now. Edge of my brush. More paint. Water if you need to to get a nice smooth flow. Okay, you can do this. All right, I'm letting some of that yellow shine through. I'm going to rinse my brush off. I'm going to pick up some of the pure red. I'm going to come in a little quarter inch, eighth of an inch on the outside edge here, putting in some of this pure red. These little strokes kind of look like that. The little soft strokes. I'm letting the, the fact that, that the brush has little hairs work for me. Let the brush do the work. You don't do the work. You do enough work in your life. Let the brush do the work. You can do this. Even if you don't get it the first time, you'll get it the second or the third time. You have faith in yourself. Give yourself some credit. Get rid of the critics that say they're jokers. Oh. Not funny. Sometimes, yeah, they're the people that we love the most. Bless them. It's when you've got to be your own friend. That's really important if you're young, if you're a little brush. Get the people out of your life that don't you make you feel good about who you are. Don't wait till you're 30 or 40 to figure that one out. If you leave seeing your friend and you just feel crummy about yourself, not a good friend. Not a good friend. Could be you're not a good friend because you're not, you know, but it, probably it's they're not a good friend. You know, people should not make you feel bad about who you are. Now, I'm going to rinse this off. And while all this is still wet, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that yellow is easily overcome by red. And while this is all still wet, I'm going to come in with these short little soft pressure brush strokes. And in the center of my eye, I'm going to add these little yellow highlights. Little yellow highlights. It's like this. The brush strokes like this again. It'll pick up a little bit of the red. It'll blend for me right on the canvas. Because the red paint's still wet. Right? <sighs> Look at that. Julie Eye. It's so easy to do. You just did it. Oh my goodness. Are you proud of yourself? I'm proud of you. Last trick is the highlight. I like to add just the smallest amount of black so that it's just off-white. I'm not trying to get a gray. I'm trying to get an off-white. One of the many Home Depot colors. Uh, if you don't live somewhere where there's a Home Depot, it's this weird hardware store that we have. And they have like 55 shades of white. Seriously. Yeah, that's, that's what we got up in here. It's 55 shades of white. 
Um, if you just happen to be somewhere where they think five shades of white is a reasonable amount of weight, know that here in the U.S., we do not always think that. Apparently, we need 55 shades. So I'm going to come make this nice highlight right here. Brush strokes are longest right there. And then they get shorter. Oh, yeah. Often let it curve with the shape of the eye. I've left a half inch up here. Some down there. And this is a good time to look. Do you need to round out your eye? If you do, grab your black paint. I do a little bit. I'm going to round out my eye. Woohoo! All right. You have given a hoot. And you painted an owl. And you've gotten the jokers out of your life. So it's a win day. I would love it if you subscribed, commented, go to the Facebook page, share your artwork with me, tell me your story. It doesn't even have to be this painting. I actually am interested in seeing what you have. Um, ask questions. If I have answers, I'll give them to you right away. And if not, I'll try to find them for you. You are talented. You are a born artist. These are just a set of skills. You could do this with me. All right. We got to get to the next painting that we're going to do. So clean up, wrap up, give yourself a little hug. And I want to see you at this easel right here really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I don't, I'm not much of a drinking blood person. Some vampires don't eat blood. What kind of vampires are those? Those are the vegetarian vampires. Vegetarian vampires? Where are those? Because the veget, because the other kinds of um, blood things, those are not healthy for you. The meat blood. And the cheese blood and the milk blood. So we're not getting those bloods. Ah, uh, just the veggie bloods? Yes. Veggie. Okay. You want to say happy Halloween, everyone? Happy Halloween.